Hey, I'm Chelsea of Friday Pattern Company and today we're going to be doing a pattern hack of the Elysium bodysuit, making it into a swimsuit. And I'm so excited because I've made it, it's right here. I kind of, this was like an idea I had and I wasn't sure, I did some like crazy print mixing. I wasn't sure how it was gonna turn out. I love how it turned out. So this was kind of filmed on the fly and I take you through the steps of the hack, but not through like the sewing process. Any of that stuff, you'll find information on the sew along video, which we'll link below that takes you through the sewing steps of the Elysium bodysuit. And then I kind of highlight the things that I changed to make this into the swimsuit because I, so like I created this two piece kind of back opening that I think turned out really cute. I added some like binding right here and then I also made it sleeveless and added a binding to the um, arm opening. So yeah, we go over this stuff, but we go kind of quick. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below and yeah, let's get started. One more thing, um, I like love this color. I wouldn't use a light color on the bottom of a swimsuit again. And you'd think that I would have like thought of that, but um, I didn't. And it is a little bit, uh, you can just see, you can't see through it because I did two layers and we'll go over that. Um, but you know, I think maybe I'd like a little bit more, like feel a little bit more kind of, <laughs> obscured <laughs> anyway so just uh learn from my mistakes and use this color up top darker color down below so the piece that will be modified the most for the swimsuit hack is the back piece because we want to create that back opening and i'm going to create turn it into two pieces that are kind of curved so i am just like kind of roughly marking off where how big i want the back opening to be and I didn't actually use any rhyme or reason for this. I kind of just eyeballed it, but you could kind of measure out how big you want the upper back to be and how big you want the lower back to be. Keep in mind that there will be binding as well. It'll add a little bit of extra. Now I'm marking an inch above and below the side notch because I want those to stay in these new pieces I create as a reference point to match up with the front curved seam. I'm drawing a perpendicular line from center back out a half inch from each of the marks I made just to balance the kind of curve I'm going to make. And then I'm connecting this upper mark to my lower mark that I made. And again, I'm just kind of eyeballing this. You could use like a French curve, um, but I can kind of tell like it, it doesn't matter structurally because this is more of like a decorative back opening. Yeah, I just kind of eyeballed it and I thought it looked good. So now I'm gonna trace these pieces off. This upper and lower back are gonna be two separate pieces. So I need to trace them as two separate pieces. That's what I'm doing here. Just trace around that curved line you drew and the pattern piece. And then I'm also including any notches that are on the pattern because we'll still need those. And then once you have your pieces traced off, you're going to cut them out and pro tip, as you're, if you have a rotary blade, like a uh, self-healing mat set up, as your blades get dull and you kind of don't need them anymore, I have an extra rotary cutter that I end up using for paper and I use my dull blades to cut paper. Um, I have a separate rotary cutter for paper and it's like my favorite way to cut out patterns. It's so much faster than scissors. Anyway. Just thought you should know. Also, I'm watching myself cut with a rotary cutter for the first time and it's kind of terrifying looking. Uh, I'm left-handed, so that might be why it looks kind of strange, but yeah. <laughs> so for our upper back and our lower back, we're going to cut one piece on the fold, which is just like what we did, um, we would do if we were just cutting our regular back piece. And I had already cut the lower back off camera, so you can see how we've got a cute little color blocked Elysian swimsuit coming together here. Very exciting. For our upper back and lower back pieces, we want to create a binding that's basically the same as the neckline binding that's already included in the pattern, which is a one and a half inch wide pattern piece. What I'm doing here is measuring this back opening carefully to see how long it is and then I'm going to take that number and multiply it by 0.9 and then that will give us the amount, uh, the length of the binding piece and we know that it's going to be one and a half inches wide. 
and you'll repeat this for the upper back and the lower back opening. So I'm gonna cut some strips of one and a half inches wide because that is the width of all of the binding. And I have the neckline binding pattern piece that's included in the pattern. I'm making those two extra binding pieces for the upper back and the lower back opening. I've got my leg hole binding and then I'm also going to do binding. I'm gonna make this sleeveless and I'm gonna put binding around the arm openings. So I'm just gonna cut a bunch of strips and then I'll cut them down to size. I also pinned the uh, binding pieces that I cut to the pattern piece they're going to just because there are a lot of them and I didn't want them to get mixed up. One of the other cutting modifications for the pattern is that I cut two of these lower front pieces rather than just one just to give a little bit more um, thickness to the front of the bathing suit. The first sewing we're going to do is to sew binding onto the back neckline which is covered in the sew along video with more like guidance on how you do that. But essentially you're just, you use your binding pieces um, and you're gonna pull them slightly as you sew so that when you wear this, it lays flat. So we did the neckline binding and then we used that same principle to sew the binding onto that curved edge we created on the upper back and the lower back. And now we're gonna baste the side seams together. So we're gonna match our notches up and there's just a little overlap right there that we can take to our machine and baste in place. And here that is basted together so you can see that now we can sew front to back um, with treating the back piece as if it were one piece rather than the two pieces that we cut originally. I want to also add some decorative binding to the curved seam on the under bust just to give it a little something extra. So here I've followed the instructions to join the front to the back of the shoulders. And again, watch our sew along for like detailed guidance on doing that. Now I have a strip of binding. Again, it's an inch and a half wide and I'm just gonna pin it in along this curved seam. And then I will take that to the sewing machine and baste that like a quarter of an inch from the edge so that when I sew the upper front to the lower front, um, this will just be encased inside of it. And here that is sewn in place. Okay, I did a lot of sewing without you, but a lot of this stuff is covered in the sew along video for the bodysuit. So I joined the upper front to the lower front and I top stitched that seam on the bust side so that that little extra would hang down. And then I added the leg binding and you know joined it front to back. I'm going to trim down the shoulder seam because I tried it on and because I'm not adding sleeves, I think this, um, I want this to just be like a little bit smaller. So I pin kind of how narrow I want it to be. And then I'm just, again, I'm doing this like kind of on the fly, but I'm just kind of cutting up to that point along the front and the back. And then I'm gonna use this piece as a reference to match the other side to um, this. And I'll trim that side down as well. And then now that I have that trimmed down, we need to measure the arm side opening uh, to cut our binding length for it. So I'm just going to carefully measure the opening of the armhole and then just like I did with the bindings on the back, I'll multiply that times 0.9 to come up with my binding length and the width is one and a half just like we've been using for everything else. And then we'll sew that binding onto the armholes in the same manner that we have been sewing our other bindings. And here's the finished Elysian swimsuit. I love how it turned out. I'm so excited to take this thing swimming. Uh, yeah, and I know I moved really quickly through this. So again, if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments below. And I hope that you guys have a lot of fun sewing and see you soon.